All right. Well, good morning. I am honored today to have my guest, Christina Marlette, joining me. As most of you know from some of the previous interviews I've been hosting, the intention of these videos is to collate some magnificent insights and wisdom around the whole topic of powerful language. When my book releases this fall, um, the uh, Power of Words is the working title for it, and it's really intended to help women shift their confidence by having more powerful and confident language. Some of it is to do with the words that we use, some of it is word concepts that will help empower and engage others as well. And with this, the intention is that we'll be able to have more flourishing businesses, more powerful language, more strong women stepping up and making a massive ripple effect. So I'm honored that Christina is able to join us. Christina is a um, embodiment coach, um, author, and uh, leader for the Courageous Self-Care Movement. And um, we have, I believe, quite a bit in common because we love words and we love writing. Um, so Christina, perhaps you'd like to do a quick introduction for yourself. There's probably lots that I've missed and how your work connects to some of the things that we're doing with the book. Mm, thank you, Yvonne. I'm so grateful to be here. Um, so yeah, as you said, an embodiment coach, which most people don't know what that is, but it's helping people, women in particular, get out of their heads mm -hmm and into their bodies. And the benefit of doing that is we tend to actually learn best through movement. If you look at little kids, they don't sit still. They're taking in the world through their bodies and the education system kind of weans that out of us. But I love to give that gift back to people because our bodies are so important. That's where all the truth is. And I believe that there are direct connection to spirit. And so we can get so much information through our bodies when we know how to listen. And so I've become kind of an interpreter at helping people understand the language of their bodies. And then um, what else? I'm also a speaker and like you said, a writer. I wrote a book called How Ugly Awkward Dancing Changes Everything. And what really matters to me is that people feel fully alive and energized, an overflow of energy. And I believe if everyone felt like that, oh, the world would be so delicious. <laughs> it would. If everyone was all lit up and living their passions and their purpose. And to uh, a huge part of that for me, feeling fully alive and um, with overflowing abundant energy is words. Our words are so powerful. Mm. And every word has its own vibration. It has its own energy level. And so it's important to choose carefully what we're thinking and what we're saying, because those words become our reality and our signature vibration that goes out into the world. Exactly. And um, certainly with the, the beginning, the preface of the book, um, you just repeated something that I've actually got four times all on one page. Words <laughs> are powerful. Words are powerful. Words are powerful. <laughs> And they are because, uh, you know, I know that one word difference can make a massive difference. And in the, the history, you know, my history of working originally in uh, senior HR roles, probably interviewed and hired about 6,000 people in my career, asked thousands and thousands of coaching questions as I've been working with women leaders and women entrepreneurs over the past seven, 10 years in particular, that one word can make a significant difference. So I'm interested in your insights, Christina, on maybe there's a few examples of words that you've either seen other people, clients of yours, maybe you've experienced yourself where it's been one word that has significantly increased someone's confidence. And then also on the flip side, perhaps one word or word concept that's depleted someone's energy and those, those low vibrational frequency words. So what are some examples that you've seen that are powerful enough to elevate or destroy? Oh, this topic is so uh, juicy to me. I'm just thinking all sorts of ideas are going off. So one, well, I have words up on my wall because mm. uh, it's important to have those high vibration words in our environment to remind us. Yep. But anyways, um, one top or one word that comes to mind that I speak a lot about is busy. Mm -hmm. That is the standard answer I hear now when I ask people, how are you? 
-hmm. and they say busy. I'm like, oh, busy is not a state. <laughs> but what you're telling me with the word busy is that you're stressed out and depleted and running on empty. And uh, I love the origins of words. So whenever a word piques my interest, I go and look at the etymology of it. And the word for busy, like the origins of the word busy are actually anxious. Mm. So that's what we're saying if we're uh, sharing that we're busy. And so I wanted, I didn't want to go around saying, I'm anxious all the time. I have a lot on the go, that's for sure. But I'm choosing all of it and I love all of it. So I went on a search. It was like this epic quest to find a new word for busy that better explained and matched the new vibration I wanted to be. And uh, for a little while when people would say, oh my gosh, you're so busy, I would say, oh no, 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 I'm not busy. My life is just really full. And then that kind of had the same feeling to it, like no room for anything else. Um, and so that one didn't last very long. And then it took me about a month and I like literally was <laughs> researching words that I could use instead of busy and full. And so the word that I ended up with that I use all the time now is exciting. Mm. So when people say, oh my gosh, your life is so busy. I say, no, it's not. No, I don't. I've eliminated busy from my vocabulary. My life is exciting. And that's how I choose to see it. Like when I get to drive my kids to martial arts, I'm excited to do that. I love that they're growing and learning. When I have a blog post to do, or when I'm choosing to do a blog post, I am very excited to do it, to share my message. So, and then it's also a good reminder if something is not exciting or fulfilling, it probably doesn't belong in my life at this time. And so it makes it more clear that I can make that choice. Mm, that's a lovely example. And yeah, how we pick one word, one discerning word, whether it's um, dynamic, exciting, um, there's lots of individual words that we could use. I love exciting. It actually reminds me when my husband and I are at the grocery store, um, the cashiers, you know, doing their thing. And it's sort of a standard question, how are you today? And they really don't feel or resonate that they're actually asking the question and really interested. And he always bounces back like Tigger and says, fantastic. And they go, whoa. <laughs> Nobody else has probably said that with that level of commitment and energy uh, today. And, um, you know, boring is another term that you know, we just don't have boring things going on in our house. We're never bored. Um, no. No, life is, life is too much of an opportunity. So full of opportunity, fantastic, dynamic. Uh, yeah. yeah those, are, those are all better words, much better. Absolutely. Um, and then I have another one that I'd like to share if there's time. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, last year I had my own web TV show. I did 52 episodes. And it was called The Courageous Self-Care Show. And one of my guests, I had the extreme honor of interviewing John Gray, mm -hmm. who wrote Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. And he shared a replacement for the phrase, I have to. And it's just so important, especially for women. So whenever women say, I have to, they're setting off stress hormones. The cortisol goes up, the adrenaline goes up. Yep. And if you think about something that you think you have to do, you can feel, well, at least I can, I can feel the tension of that and it's like oppressive. Mm -hmm. And so he suggested um, shifting into why do I get to do this? What is underneath the have to? Like, for instance, the example he gave was, I have to go get my kids from school. Why do I want to go get my kids from school? <laughs> because I don't want them standing on the curb wondering where, how they're getting home. And what's underneath that? Well, I'm going to get my kids because I, I love them. Oh, I'm going to pick up my kids because I love them. And that turns it into a get to. And if you can feel the energy, I have to go get my kids versus I'm going to get my kids because I love them and I'm excited to spend time with them. Yeah. So different. Such a different positive vibrational energy. Um, in the book, I write about should versus could. Yes. yes. Yeah. So if you're shooting yourself, I mean, it sounds like there's an obligation there. You're not really yeah. convinced that it's something fun that you want to do, much akin to what you just shared. However, if you just replace should with could, I mean, it rhymes. It's even easy to remember. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. about I am choosing that this is my 
best option right now. I'm choosing to, uh, you know, even if it is something that is more of an obligation that you do every day, I'm choosing to still do this because it has that underlying factor that is something rewarding, something intriguing, something that you love to do, or something that you want to do. You've chosen it. Yeah. yeah. It's huge, isn't it? Oh, so, so different. <laughs> and that is a deeply ingrained habit. I, I've been working on shifting that one for a good year. Mm -hmm. And uh, and what I do is whenever it slips out of my mouth, I just, I'm aware that it's there. And I say, oh, oh, I said I have to. What I meant was, oh, I get to. And why do I get to it? I just think in my mind. Oh yeah. So that makes it more, um, more, it has more draw to it rather than a push. Yeah, absolutely. And it is all, I believe business now is all about the invitation. So I think that gone are the times where um, there's a push, 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 push. And now are the times where we're seeing more social enterprises popping up. There is more business for good initiatives. There's more of an invitation in copywriting these days and copy, good copy marketing. And it's, um, it's shifting. Business is shifting and I'm so excited because the women that I'm working with who are women visionaries, they're very often leading women's organizations. Um, they, they know that they can have a massive ripple effect when they're showcasing what a great role model looks like and using powerful language themselves and then sharing that with others. So I'm interested too on the topic of self-care because Courageous Self-Care is your brand and um, you know, that's evolved over uh, a number of years, different experiences. I started working when I first was doing coaching with the Shattered Ceiling brand, which was all about striving and breaking through. And after about five years, I realized that that was not in alignment with who I was any longer and the brand to flourish which has a much different energy of growth and excitement. And um, it, it's just a whole different energy. And it's been a, a lot different in the success that it's attracted. Yeah. But I'm interested in health care, in self-care. And if there's maybe one or two words, tips there that women could use to shift their language around that whole topic of self-talk even. Because that's mm -hmm. the thing. Yeah, so the reason that I call it courageous self-care is it's the self-care that goes beyond what we typically think of self-care. And there's sort of two, not sort of, there are two versions of self-care. One is external. So that's the stuff we're doing to the outside of ourselves, um, like nutrition and hydration, sleep and exercise. Those are all very important. And then at the same time, there's internal self-care. And so... Uh, in my experience, most, most if not all of my clients have been focusing on the external self-care and not getting the results that they want. And underneath all of that is a desire for this overflowing energy to be able to give from the bounty rather than from being drained and empty. And so what I focus on is the internal self-care and it takes courage because mm -hmm. it's scary. And um, so there are 12 different pillars of courageous self-care. There are things like um, growing your gratitude and not in the ways that we have typically thought like what I love to do is give people new paradigms new ideas and then give very actionable steps on how to make this happen and incorporate it into your life so that self-care isn't a routine and here's a word shift it's not a series of things I have to do it's not even um, get to do it becomes ritual so it has that sacred underlying um, feeling and quality to it. So shifting from a self-care routine to a self-care ritual, it just honors who you are and it, it feels so much more connecting. Um, so I think two words that are coming up right now that are really important in terms of courageous self-care is, well, three. So the first thing is that self-care is not selfish. We yeah. must take care of ourselves and put that energy into ourselves so that we can give it to others. We're programmed as women to nurture, and that's where we get a cascade of um, relaxation hormones when we nurture. But the, the 
crux of it mm -hmm. is that first we must nurture ourselves. And for most women that I've met, that's the hardest thing to do. Yeah. Especially since uh, we've been told that nurturing is going to the spa and eating chocolate and exercising. Yes, those are, if those are your cup of tea, then those are important. And it's different for each woman what it is that nurtures her and to create this ritual. So um, two words that are really important to understand, I researched the word courage as well because it always pops up in my life. The difference between bravery and courage. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really important to understand that in the context of self-care. So being brave, what it means in the, uh, the old etymology of it, and usually there's presented as synonyms, but the actual meaning of bravery is that there is no fear. So if you think of, um, uh, for me, I love public speaking. Mm -hmm. it, it, I don't have to work up my courage to do it. I'm just brave about it. I love it. It's something that I, it's my dharma. I get up on stage. I have a little bit of nerves, but it disappears and I love it. So other people could say about me, wow, Christina's really brave about public speaking. Courage, on the other hand, it has the word core in it. And it means that there is a fear to overcome and we have to access our heart to be able to move through it. And the other important thing about courage is that there's mindfulness to it. We have to, or there is the opportunity to find the ideal that's on the other side that's worth moving through to get to where we want to be. So for example, um, for me, making phone calls. I love public speaking, but making phone calls is not something I love to do. It scares me. Um, I, I have a fear of rejection. And so not every phone call means rejection, but <laughs> in a business context, often they do. And so I need to think about, okay, what's on the other side of making this phone call that's worth moving through this fear? So it might be connection, it might be helping empower someone, give them a gift or tools. Ultimately, it's personal transformation and making the world a better place. So is that worth going through my fear to get to the other side? Absolutely. And yes. so I think that distinction is really important, especially in the context of self-care. Yeah, we can go and get our nails done and it doesn't take a lot of courage to do that but to go deep within and look at who we are and maybe find out that we don't like some of the things that are in there and making shifts that all takes courage. Mm -hmm. It does. And, and certainly the difference between, you know, courage and confidence, you know, one supports the other. And yet um, if we are working on daily affirmations, looking at, you know, I am courageous has a different energy. It has a different meaning. So thank you for sharing that. And um, I've also been looking at the, the roots of the words, looking at some of the um, you know, dictionary definitions. And it's amazing how one word difference, well, that's, that's the essence of the book. One word can make a huge difference. Yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I was curious about one thing. Um, you mentioned about being selfish and women don't like to think that they're being selfish. So is there another word that has resonated much better from your experience that could be a replacement for the word selfish? Well, I looked up selfish in my quest to <laughs> help women understand that they're not being selfish. Yeah. And what I found interesting about the word selfish is that it didn't exist until Christianity came around. Yeah. And so for thousands of years, there was no concept of what selfish is. Okay. And then when the church got involved and started dictating how people should live and how they should um, be selfless, mm. um, selfish evolved. And so I don't know that there's another word to replace it with, but just to know that, that it's a made up concept, mm. <laughs> being selfish is, it's fabricated to serve um, someone's dogma. Yes. essentially. Yeah. And so I would just like to, for me, I just eliminate that word. Like if you think about the word self-ish, like being ish about yourself, there's no need for that. Yeah. <laughs> I want to be solid in myself. So I don't know, self-solid. <laughs> well, I like making up new words. <laughs> I, I love even selfless. Mm -hmm. Really? I mean, when we think about, you know, the air, air, 
uh, airline demonstration, you know, every airplane that you fly on, you have to you know, put your own oxygen mask on first before helping others. So we know this, and yet there still seems to be this cultural expectation, particularly of women, that if we do step aside and say, this actually doesn't work for me, this will be much better instead, that there's that line, fine line between how we say it, the energy we say it, whether we say it with a smile or not, that is either perceived as being aggressive or being assertive. And it's that, it's that uh, nuance that makes all the yeah. difference. So yeah, yeah lots, of, lots of great information. And um, with your permission, um, I, we are recording this session. I would love to be sharing this with some of the uh, people that are interested in what's coming up in the book. Um, if there's a quote or two, um, you know, do I have your permission to maybe put a little quote in the book, perhaps? Absolutely, yeah. Lovely. Put that's away. What nuggets <laughs> are coming out of here? Um, and I think that, um, you know, I'm nodding as you're talking because just by showcasing, you know, I, I, I want to or I need to, and then catching ourselves and saying, oh, what I meant by that is just that you're putting yeah. emphasis on how you place importance on the right word to really demonstrate how you're feeling and what it is you really are wanting to communicate. So yeah. thank you for doing those self-corrections and being willing to do that. Because a lot of people just kind of, oh shoot, that was the wrong word, but they can, then they carry on. Um, yes. And that doesn't necessarily help other people in terms of their understanding of what they were really saying or mm -hmm. potentially looking at other ways to to share that information with a different uh, intention and right. intention is really yeah, yeah. Um, one other word that I just wanted to mention and maybe you talk about it in your book um, that makes such a big difference and I do this with my kids all the time is the word bad bad whenever we, yeah whenever we qualify something as bad it erases all possibility mm -hmm. and so uh, I've eliminated the word bad from my vocabulary and uh, when my kids use it, I say, you know, bad is such a boring word and it doesn't really tell me what you're trying to get across. What other word could you use instead? And the words that they come up with give me so much more understanding of what it is they're trying to say. Like if you say, I had a bad, a bad day, oh, what a horrible vibration you're putting on the entire day. Why would you want to do that? So digging deeper and, uh, being more curious, curiosity is such a wonderful um, state to be in. What is it about the, my day that makes me want to qualify the whole thing as bad? Oh, so I had one difficult conversation with someone and, uh, and it left me with this uncomfortable feeling. So much more descriptive than bad. And then you can do something about it. Yeah. And I think that, um, you know, you and I have both taken some of, you know, Harv Eker's uh, trainings in the past, warrior, wizard, all of those things. Yeah. Um, and the, I can't remember which one it was, but it was the example where they give a, a blank sheet of paper and it's white and there's a one black dot in the middle of the page and how, op how often people just focus on that one black dot, but there's all this other space for possibilities in other ways. And sometimes when we're busy, all we focus on is the negative. So it is time, I believe, to start opening up the door to more possibilities, looking at all the white space that could be created. And I love that you're helping your kids to also tap into some of the, that language. Um, fat was one that came up on an interview this week as well with um, mm -hmm. an image consultant that I have done some work with in the past. You know, how can we eliminate that word fat? Because that seems to be a trigger word, especially for women. Yes. So, one <laughs> work the whole difference. <laughs> so I want to be respectful of time and I know that you've done some wonderful work and um, I'm just wondering if there's anything further that um, if any of our um, audience listeners are saying, wow, you know, I love what Christina's doing. I'm really interested in uh, courageous self-care. You know, how can they maybe connect with you or is there anything that you have that is um, something they could engage with? Yeah, uh, absolutely. So on my website, which is christinamarlette.com, um, I have lots of blog posts written about words and uh, alternative solutions, and then also about the different concepts of courageous self-care and easy actionable steps to start making that your ritual rather than a routine or even just a, 
a nice idea for other people. Yes. So uh, that's the best place to connect with me, christinamarlette.com, and there's lots of uh, great information there. Excellent. And it's M-A-R-L-E-T-T. -T. That's right. Okay. And Christina with a C-H. Christina with a C-H, christinamarlette.com. Lovely. Well, thank you so much for sharing some of your insight and wisdom. And uh, I certainly am hoping that once the, the book comes out, I can certainly have, I think I have room still to include some of these snippets. And obviously I'll be quoting you as part of that. And it's been lovely chatting with you. I've enjoyed the time together. And uh, is there anything else in closing that you wanted to share? Um, yeah, I also challenge people to go beyond good. So if, yeah, how are you? Eh, good. Good is boring too. <laughs> <laughs> good, bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if there's one actionable step, what I would encourage you to do is take the, uh, I don't want to overwhelm people. Um, so the action step from the end of this interview is take one idea that you would like to shift and make that your focus for the next week or so whether it's have to and to get to, or looking at the ways that you're courageous, or uh, playing with a different word for busy, or good and bad. So take one of those and see how you can shift it. And I guarantee that you're going to see amazing results. Mm -hmm. You will. And in the book, at the end of each chapter, there is a tip around the word that's been talked about. So um, endorsing, yes, it's, it's great to take action in the moment, increase the awareness. And if I can help women to have more awareness on how they use their language and what they can do to shift it more powerfully, my work is done. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you for doing your work, Yvonne. It's so important. Thank you, Christina. And have a, a fabulous rest of the week and um, appreciate your insights. Thank you. Thank you so Take much care. for having me. Okay. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.